Hello everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to another video. Have you ever wondered how can I actually build an installation of Arch Linux where I can work maybe on a website or I want to work on a new project with a web server? Well, we can do this very easily by installing the LAMP stack. LAMP is an acronym for Linux, Apache, Maria Database and PHP. And those are the packages we need in order to install something like WordPress. If you want to test a website, for example, or if you want to build a new one. So what we're going to do in this video is to install the LAMP stack on Arch Linux and have your own web server on Arch Linux where you can develop eventually your new website. So let's get going and see how it's done. So let's get started here in installing the software we need to run our website. And I'm doing this already since a while and I'm really happy to have Arch Linux as a server. It does actually work really well, even it's bleeding edge software, even it's a rolling release. But in my case, because I keep it always up to date, it has always been very stable and I've been running the server without any problem. So in order to install the web server and WordPress to work on a website here, we need to install what's called the LAMP stack. Now, LAMP is an acronym for Linux, Apache, MySQL and PHP. So these are basically the components we need to run our web server and eventually WordPress on it. So let's begin with the L. Well, we have that already because that's Linux and we are running Arch, so we are fine with that. And we can move over to the second component, which is the Apache web server. So let's open up the terminal because all the commands we need to run here are from the terminal. I'll go full screen, increase the font size a little. And let's install our Apache server by typing in sudo pacman-s and then Apache and then hit enter. We'll enter our sudo password and hit enter and we press enter to accept the installation. And there you go, Apache is installed. So let's clean up the terminal. Now we need to basically enable Apache and start it at the same time so we can type in sudo systemctl enable dash dash now httpd which is the service for apache and then we can hit enter so this command basically enables the web server when we boot the machine and started it right away that's the now switch now the configuration file for apache is under the etsy directory and we need to go there and uncomment one of the modules so to change that we need to type in sudo vim slash etsy slash httpd slash conf slash httpd.conf and hit enter and we need to search for the module, which is the unique ID module. So let's search this in Vim, unique underscore ID underscore module. There you go, it's the one already selected. So I can hit enter here, and I need to uncomment this line by deleting the hashtag here. And then we can save the file and exit Vim. Now we need to reload our server by typing in sudo systemctl restart httpd and hit enter and the web server is restarted. Now, the module we just uncommented provides a magic token for each request, which is guaranteed to be unique across all requests under very specific conditions. And I just wanted to make sure to uncomment this so that the server treats these requests properly. Now, we can check actually if the server is up and running, if we get out of the terminal here, and let me open up Firefox. And this machine is configured with the name localhost, as it should be also in your case, if you follow the base installation of Arch Linux. So if I type in here localhost and hit enter, we have our web server here up and running. There is not much in here, but the server is running. So let's close Firefox and go back to our terminal, clean it up and proceed to the next step, which is installing our PHP modules. So we have a bunch of packages to install here. We can type in sudo pacman-s. The first package is PHP. We have also PHP-CGI. We have also then PHP-GD and PHP-PGSQL and also PHP-Apache. And then we can hit enter. Now we can press enter here to accept the defaults and the packages are now installed. So let's clean up the terminal. And we need to go back again into our configuration file for the web server because we need to uncomment a module and comment another one. So let's do this again by typing in sudo vim slash etsy slash httpd slash conf slash httpd.conf and hit enter. And the first line we need to comment is the line which has npm event module. So let's search for this npm underscore event 
underscore module and there you go and it's the first one that we need to basically comment so let's hit enter here go to the beginning of the line and hit enter mode and add a hash here and we need to uncomment the pre-fork module which is just underneath so let's do this by deleting the hashtag here and then we can save the file but we don't exit vim yet because we need to add some lines here so let's go down at the end of the file and enter insert mode again and let's enter these lines so we need to enter first our php modules so let's type in load module php7 underscore module and then modules slash libphp7.so on the next line we can type in add handler php7 dash script and then php and in the last line we type in include conf slash extra slash php7 underscore module dot conf so what we basically did here we commented out one module and uncommented another one which is helping the server with child processes and we added also some extra things here for php so now we can save the file and exit vim and we need to edit also our php.ini file to enable two extensions there. So to do this, we can type in sudo vim slash etsy slash php slash php.ini and hit enter. And we need to search here for the mysqli extension, which is down here somewhere. So let me scroll down the file here and I can see it is right here. So we need to basically uncomment this extension by deleting the semicolon here. And we do the same for the GD extension for which we install also the package. So let's delete the semicolon and we can save this file and exit Vim. And now let's test if PHP is working correctly by creating a PHP file in our server. So let's type in sudo Vim slash SRV, which is the server directory slash HTTP and then info dot PHP and hit enter and let's type in the php code here so we'll type in the minor than symbol and then a question mark php and then php info opening and closing parentheses semicolon a space question mark and major than symbol and then we can save the file and exit vim and we need to restart one more time our web server so let's type in sudo system ctl restart httpd and hit enter and let's go back to our browser and see what happens. So let's open up Firefox here and let's type in here again, localhost, but this time we add at the end info.php, any tensor. And you can see the PHP file here. So that means PHP is working correctly. So let's close the browser and proceed to the next step, which is installing our database for WordPress. So I'll go back to the terminal, go full screen in here, clean it up. And let's install the packages we need for MariaDB. So let's type in sudo pacman-s. And the first package is MariaDB. Then we need also lib MariaDB client. And we need also MariaDB-clients. And then we can hit enter. Proceed with installation. And the packages are now installed. So we can clean up the terminal. Now let's set the basic configuration for the database by typing in sudo mysql underscore install underscore db and then dash dash user equal mysql and then dash dash base dir for the base directory which is equal to slash user and then dash dash data dir equal slash var slash lib slash mysql. So we define the base directory and also the data directory. And then we can hit enter. It's going to take a second to do that. There you go. So we can clean up the terminal. And the next step is to enable our service. So let's type in sudo system ctl enable dash dash now. And then mysqld. And then we can hit enter. So this basically again enables the service when we boot the machine and starts the service right away. So we need to set first a secure installation for the database before we proceed with the installation itself. So we can type in sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation. And hit enter. 
Now, in order to log into MariaDB to secure it, we'll need the current password for the root user. If you have just installed the MariaDB and you haven't set the root password, you should just press enter here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do because I didn't set any password. So we have to decide here whether to switch to Unix socket authentication. And I will let the default here for yes. So the next question is change the root password. In this case, I want to type in N to leave it empty and hit enter. I want to remove anonymous user, so I'm going to accept the defaults here. And I want to disallow also root login remotely, so I'm just going to hit enter here. And the same for the test database. And I want to reload the privilege table now. And this is now done. So we can clean up the terminal and proceed with the installation of our database. So to do this, we can type in sudo mysql-u for the user, and the user is root, dash p, and the password is empty. And then we can hit enter. Now the password is empty, so we just hit enter here. And we can create now our database. So let's go ahead and do that. So we create a database by typing in create database. And you can call the database anything you want. In my case, I'm going to call it my WordPress and then add the semicolon at the end and hit enter. Now let's clean up the terminal to have a bit more space here. The next step is to create the user. So let's go ahead and do that by typing in create user, single quote, and then you choose the username. In my case, it's going to be my name here. Single quote again, at single quote, the name of the server. In our case, it's localhost. Then a single quote again, and then identified by single quote, and then we choose the password for this user. In my case, I'm going to choose a very simple one, one, two, three, four. Please choose a better one, and then a semicolon to end the command, and then we can hit enter. Next, we need to grant privileges to this user, so we can type in grant all privileges on. And then the database name, in my case, it was my WordPress dot asterisk and then two. So we give the privileges to single quote, the username, single quote, at single quote, local host, and then single quote again, the semicolon and enter to accept the command. Now we need to flush the privileges. So let's type in flush privileges, semicolon and hit enter. And we can exit now the program by typing in exit, and this is done. So let's clean up the terminal. Now we need to download WordPress in our server directory. So to do this, we need to change to the server directory. Let's do this by typing in cd slash srv slash http, and hit enter. Now we can use wget to download WordPress, and if we don't have it installed, we can type in now sudo pacman s and then wget, and hit enter and proceed with the installation. In my case, it was already installed, but I reinstalled it again. And now that we are still in the server directory, we can use wget to download WordPress by typing in sudo wget https colon slash slash and then wordpress.org slash latest dot tar dot gz. And then we can hit enter. It's gonna take a moment here to download WordPress. There you go. And now we need to decompress the file that we just downloaded. So to do this, we can type in sudo tar xvzf and then latest.tar.gz and then we can hit enter. It's going to take a moment to do that. There you go. Now we have WordPress installed in our directory, but we need to change the permissions in there so that the web server can read on that. So to do this, we need to type in sudo chon for changing ownership dash capital R, because we want to make the changes recursive in the directory, then the user is root, colon, and the group is HTTP, the web server. And the directory is slash SRV, slash HTTP, slash WordPress, which was created when we downloaded WordPress. And then we can hit enter. Now let's go into the WordPress directory by typing in CD and then WordPress and hit enter. And in this directory, there is already a sample configuration file for WordPress that we can use. So we can type in sudo cp for copy and then wp-config-sample.php. And the name of the configuration is going to be wp-config.php. And then we can hit enter. Now we need to edit this configuration file to add the username and password for the database. So to do this, we can type in sudo vim and then wp-config.php and hit enter. 
and we basically move down here and we replace that database name here with the name of our database, which in my case was my WordPress. The username here on the bottom. So let's replace this with the username we chose. In my case, it was my name. And the same goes for the password down here. So we'll replace with our password, which in my case, it was one, two, three, four, very secure password. And then we can save the file and exit Vim. And let's exit the terminal here and go back to Firefox. And let's type in here localhost and then WordPress and hit enter. And you can see here we have our welcome screen for WordPress where we can configure our website. So let's do this site title name. I will call this one test site. And the username is going to be my name. This is the username for the WordPress installation, not for the database. Then you can choose here a password. Again, I'm going to use the 1234. It's just an example. And I'm going to confirm this. We need to type in an email here. This is mandatory. So I'm just going to type in here info at my website. And I'm going to click install WordPress. Now, I don't want to save this right now. And there you go. WordPress has been installed. And let's click login and type in the username and the password. And we are now in WordPress. So let's go to test site here. Right click, open link in new tab. And we have our website up and running. And this is how you can install WordPress on Arch Linux with a web server. It's not a difficult process. And if you have a website that you would like to develop or you would like to test out a little bit WordPress, this is a fairly simple way to do it. There you go, guys. This is how you can install the LAMP stack and WordPress in Arch Linux. It's a very simple procedure. And as you can see, Arch Linux is very fast, being also a very light distribution. And you can really work well with WordPress. If you have any questions about the video, guys, let me know in the comments below. I will be more than happy to answer them as soon as I can. And I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website. A big thank you to our Patreons always. And if you want to donate to the channel, you can do so by visiting our website and donate via PayPal. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.